Hello, 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 and welcome back. This is Franz Cantor, cartoonist, illustrator, teacher, tinker, tailor, spy, and, <coughs> pardon me, I'm here with... Was that a dry cough? Uh, no. It was <laughs> with, with social distancing, Jim Bridges, and I'm the president of the Australian Cartoon Museum. Huzzah! In downlot, downtown Downlot. Downlot, down, where we are. Yep, in the, the Sandlot kids. So, um, this is... Uh, we're, I'm back here doing another caricature which is uh, really fun and I'm enjoying it and I hope you guys are enjoying this process too. Today's subject actually is uh, something very close to all of our hearts I believe <coughs> and that is um, uh, the creator of the orange haired kid Tin Tin. So his name is Herge and I'll just, uh, I've done a thumbnail. A little is that his surname or his first name? You know what? Let's let's ask. This is him anyway. This is the person Perge, that we're working away. from, right? This is uh, him, you know, doing the French uh, jazz quarter or whatever. <laughs> look, it doesn't look like he likes smoking, does he? Um, and of course, this is his uh, his character Tintin and Snowy. And this is one of the only books that I've actually read all the way through, which is Red Rackham's Jesus. Treasure. Guinness Book of Records, you read right through. Mm. So this is some of the characters. You know, there's uh, Captain Haddock, of course, um, mm. Professor Calculus. There's uh, also the, um, who are these? The, the Thompson dumb, twins. The dumb twins, yeah. Yeah, and a cast of other characters which uh, we won't go into. She's an opera singer, isn't she? She is, yes. I can't remember her name, but she's she's in... Countess something. Yeah, she's yeah. in quite a few uh, of the stories. Yeah. So let's ask Mr. Wikipedia if we're nice, to see what he has to say about... Well, his about, first name is. Yeah. Georges Prosper Remy, um, known by the pen name Hergé. So there's a little... Um, so what does Hergé mean? Uh, he's a Belgian cartoonist best known for creating The Adventures of Tintin. Yeah. So I'm not actually sure about his name. Let's see if I can get the... I must put in the accent... Don't look up Wikipedia while you're drawing. <laughs> I'm looking up Wikipedia. That's as my I job. So, uh, Belgian cartoonist, um, yeah, you, you can put your specs on. And, oh, no, actually, no, I have to you, use no, the picture. No, you need that yeah. for reference. So, he's done a whole lot of uh, Tintin books. So a what's whole lot your, of Tintin books. Yeah, and it's, you know, lots and lots of Tintin books. So, he was born in 1907 and died uh, in uh, 1983. And uh, let's go back to the uh, picture that we're working from here. Uh, this one. Right, and uh, we'll, we'll show, 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 show. Yeah, I've showed you it. guys this. No, this have, have, have a good look. That's what we're working from. Okay. All right. all right, so the idea here, it's got a very round head like Tintin. So I thought of maybe putting in the Tintin spiky hair bits. You That's know? a good idea, Ollie. So that would kind of like give him more of a... Um, an autobiographical look. Yeah. Also, the other thing we're considering is it's got a beautiful round head. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, simplicity in the um, simplicimus in the process. So that's kind of nice. Good we've German, got a good German cartoon magazine. Simplicimus. Yeah, we've got a good uh, uh, handle on the on the light and dark here with uh, the implication of um, shadows created from the spot which is on the left hand side of the picture as you can see you know even there's a little spot the second spotlight there but mainly as you can see with the cast shadow the light's coming in from this direction so that's how we're favoring the light so we're going to have uh, shadows falling in this this section of the thing and also worth noting is the the um, invention of the mask or zone so-called t-zone which includes the eyes the nose and the mouth that's our area of focus so that's where you get your main uh, um, area of uh, recognition. And in a caricature, you need to do that. So the process of caricature is simplification, which is what we've done, simplified it into a cartoony version. And we're able to then expand on the elements within the face in a very uh, naturalistic way. So keeping the convention of, uh, of simplifying and then 
um, in, the, in the new shapes, the new areas where we've moved all of the elements to, we then start to uh, create the story, the narrative, which is paying attention to all the little details of his uh, features, of his face. So all the creases and bumps and, and furrows and things of his uh, head we're going to be uh, looking at. So when was your uh, first exposure to Tintin? Were you about eight years old or something and interested in travelling the world from your experience with Uncle Scrooge? Well, I read, I read everything. Um, I read everything. Um, classic comics and um, Australian comics and American classic comics. Classic comics? Like the British comics. Yeah, you know, things like um, Hamlet, where the whole to be or not to be speech is in one speech balloon fills up a third of the page. Right. By a guy called, I think his name is Alec Blum. I can't mm -hmm. remember. The anyway, writer or the artist? The artist. Right. But, um, and, um, I mean, I just always love comics. I just think they're a wonderful, wonderful medium. I think they're one of the most underused um, educational tools on the planet, personally. But I didn't get into Tintin till I was in my 20s. Mm. Um, uh, they were they were in book book form hardback mm. in the old days, and I'd never seen a cartoon book in hardback. Yes. So I remember seeing them in libraries and stuff like that. But it's a hardback, so I didn't even bother looking at them. I mean, kids' books. Some kids' books are in hardback too. Mm. But um, and and when I flipped through them, I, they never sort of. I don't know. They they. they most people who, who... There are so many people who love Tintin. Mm. I mean, all over the world. Are you telling me you're not one of them? Well, <laughs> I don't share everybody else's... Passion. ...rapture about... I mean, I can understand why people like him, but it's just that um, the sense of adventure mm. wasn't there. It was more like detective novels. That's why I liked it, the They were more like novels. detective novels. That's why I liked it. Um... About uh, exotic places. Yeah, that's exactly the reason why and I love them. I remember in one drawing, I uh, forget what the story was, but mm. a car um, spins out of control and it falls Off on a, its side. Yeah. And the bottom of the car is drawn. Yeah. And I, I stopped and I'd never seen the bottom of a car and I really, really looked at that and I thought, gee. That's what's under a car. That's what's under a car. That's right. And I was impressed Unless with that. Unless someone hits you, you'll never know. <laughs> yeah, but I was, I was impressed with that. But then when I finished reading the, the story, the whole story, I, I don't know, it just left me a little bit cold. Right. Um, and I didn't feel like I'd been on an exotic adventure like mm. you are with... I mean, I think he was... You see, the European sensibility was very different to the American sort of... or, or the Australian. Mm. Um, comics are... are um, well, and that's another thing. Um, my favourite comics had a really fluid way of telling a story mm. and, the, and there just seemed to be too much detail in each panel. So it sort of slowed you down. It's like looking at art, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. Um, you look at all the details... Um, and of course, the old art um, was was a storytelling process. It's mm. just you know. Well, I, I guess you know different strokes for different folks. You've got a, a you know some people are attracted to that uh, very thing that turned you off. Hergé's uh, Tintin uh, was the one thing that I loved. The attention to detail, I, I absolutely adored that. Well, that's the fact that like. it was a detective thing. It was a puzzle you had to solve. Well, you had to solve this with the help of Tintin and. Let, let it not be forgotten, Snowy. Snowy is yeah, well, part Snowy of... Snowy was pretty smart. Except, Snowy was the smartest dog drunk. ever and everyone... Ex except when he got drunk. Yeah. I think he only did that once. Yeah, but, I remember that story. Mm. Yeah. But the, uh, the, the fact is that every little boy had, you know, a dog. And he, he, Hergé very quickly uh, realised... You know, when he was uh, designing um, these characters, these two, well, designing Tintin, he had to have a dog. He had to have a dog because every boy has a dog, but right? But didn't it's you think that Tintin makeup. was too they grown up? Dog. Didn't you think that Tintin was too grown up for a kid? 
Well, yeah, but, you know, um, we all aspire to being um, solvers of mystery. Yeah. That's why we, we loved Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. I, mean, I, I loved, loved Sherlock Holmes I as a to, kid. You know, the Bobsy Twins and all those sort of detectives. Well, I don't know what that is, but, well, the, you know, the famous five. Yeah. Things like yeah, that. I loved Enid all Blyton. those things, you know, sort of treasure maps and yeah. finding things behind bricks in walls and stuff yeah. like hidey holes and, you know. I loved yeah. all that, but I, I don't know, I just found his stuff was very... It was soulless. It's beautifully drawn. No, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, you know, when he draws a car, he draws a car. That's a you know, and you almost soulless. you can almost hear the sound of the door hitting, you know, slamming, you know. Mm. But um, I, I felt that a little bit soulless. There soulless. wasn't that imagine. There wasn't much imagination in the comics oh, like the God. stuff I really, really loved. And okay. That's what I love. I love the... I think you need to go back to basics and go and Well, I have, I have every one he ever tin... did. And one day and I just... You never read them? No, I, I had them for a while. Mm. And then I'm thinking, well, look, this is ridiculous, you know. Uh, I'm carrying on here. I'm you know, being the devil's advocate here. I better check them out. Mm. And I sat down a um, couple of days and I read every one. And you still think they're soulless? Well, I... I felt that his storytelling was too classical. Too, I mean, the, the way they told stories in comics was mm. different. It was much more sort of imaginative. Mm. They, they were just mysteries. That's all. They were just detective mystery stories. That's. They weren't. You know, um, it could have been something else. It didn't have to be Tintin. It could have been a. Could have been a girl, or it could have been a, an adult or something doing the same well, thing. The, yeah, but in French comics. You know, um, there are other examples of I loved, children I loved solving Captain puzzles. And I loved him. He yeah. was drunk mm. and always um, stuffing up. I liked him. He was a character I really liked. Well, they're devices in the story to actually uh, accidentally uncover clues. Yes. So the yes. dog is a dog, right? It's always a dog. Yeah, so but the dog's a smart dog. The only, yeah, but the only per person that hears the dog or really understands the dog, not, doesn't hear the dog, because, of course, the dog doesn't speak. But um, the only person he communicates well with is Tintin. Yeah. Tintin and, and Snowy have a good rapport. They have a simpatico. They are able to communicate to one another. Well, but the rest of the characters, Haddock is uh, a support character, but he's like a, he's a buffoon, really. Um, yeah, but he was a drunk. Yeah. He was a drunk. And you see, I grew up in the 50s, Maybe that was up, it. it was all too the adults real. I knew drank. Yeah, so and, this was and a they bad drank example to excess, for kids. As the Madman series tells us. Mm. And um, and I didn't like drunks. I still don't like drunks. I have a lot of trouble with drunks. But yeah. um, I liked him because he just seemed very very human and very avuncular, you know. Mm. Uh, and and uh, it, like uh, a combination of whinger and yet uh, likability. Billions of blistering blue barnacles. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I absolutely love. the closest Tintin. thing to a pirate in the whole series. Yeah, yeah, well, there were pirates, but the the thing is, like, he was, he had this sort of... Uh, well, he's a sea north. salt. He's a sea salt on land. Yeah, but he had this sort of um, rustic... Uh, um, way of of uh, solving riddles or getting out of scrapes. You know, he'd roll his sleeves up and jump into the fray. He wasn't scared of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that, again, is another support. It's like, you know, well, if Tintin gets attacked, he'll, you know, he'll yell out. Or if Snowy gets attacked, he'll yell out. And um, sure enough, um, you know, um, Haddock will, will, will jump in and, and uh, help out. Oh, yeah. But, I mean... He'd also um, sleep all day, too, and, and Tintin would go off, oh, well, he, he tried to wake him up, he can't wake him up, so he'd go off and, and, and have well, the adventure by himself, you know. Uh, um, I don't know, I just... I mean, uh, when you look at all the... I mean, I love looking at the colours. That's another thing. As a young child, I remember looking at thinking they're beautiful colours. You well, know. you've got to remember, too, that in French... Uh, publishing, um, they this, these were books. This is book publishing. Yeah. So comics are more like a, akin to newspaper style publishing, bullpens, you know, uh, in America. So they well, had a I mean, cheaper. The, the Europeans have a much more sensible, uh, civilized way of, of, of producing comics. It's not crazy like the Americans in the, the manga. You know, it's, it's not. 
it's not uh, deadline. No, because it's literary. It's a literary. Yeah, it's literary. That's right, and and that's their culture. And also, their um, most um, most French comics are well drawn. I remember a lot of people when they come from over from Europe. Hang, hang on, what, are you inferring that American comics are not well drawn? No, but I'm saying there's the art tradition. They're they're artistic. They're more mm. following. The history of art than comics do. They have a lot of comics art have galleries. Their own, yeah, comics you can have go their to own the Louvre history. and uh, yeah. see. Yeah, they follow. You know. Yeah, they have a respect and a tradition of. They're big on perspective of, and things like that. You res- know. Yeah, they have a respect and a tradition of art um, study. Yeah. So it, they're looking it's ingrained at ingrained in their DNA. Art, appreciating art, appreciating it, colour. But but you wouldn't yeah. get a. I mean, you wouldn't get a plastic man in in, in France or Germany. You know. Mm. You wouldn't even in England. Even England. I mean, English um, cartoons are, are very... Well, again, they're magazines as well. They're well, not really paper... You know, well, I'm talking about the comics, right? the Valiants and the Well, Hotspurs. they're magazines again. Well, magazines. yeah, and they have, yeah. But the, the, the printing process itself tells you quite a lot about um, the comic because what comics are appropriate to their to the process, the printing process. Some are not. Well, it's you know. funny because American comics are now caught up with the French because, I mean, um, um, a, a, a 36 pager can have stiff covers and it looks, you know, um, from a distance the same as a, as a Tintin book, you know. Mm. But that's only lately, you know. Um, yeah, um, and I've met people who love Tintin that much and have never read a comic in their life. But they've read Tintin and they love Tintin. That's it, you know. Mm. And I met a couple of blokes who um, who put a comic out called Bug and Stump, uh, Bug and Stump, mm. which is about a, a guy who meets an alien in a pub in Australia, and they they get into these adventures. And I had to go in, interview these guys for um, for a Comic Edge magazine. Mm. And I asked them, well, what sort of stuff do they grow up on? And they just looked at me. And only one of them had read comics, and, only, and he'd only ever read Tintin. Mm. His drawing was terrific, and had, he just sort of was a, a, a natural for telling stories. Mm. The other guy just read literature. And they were uni students, and they, de- they decided to do a comic while they were pissed in a pub one day. And I think they did ten issues of Bug and Stump. Mm. Anyway, um, I was just shocked, because the only comic he'd been exposed to was Tintin. Mm. Yeah, but you know, it just reminds you that uh, Tintin is is still a comic, no matter what. Your oh yeah, about oh yeah, but it's also a well strict it's comic. Written, it, it's panels. Hmm. Very rarely do you break out. You know, yeah, it's not designed to be uh, that no sort of action pages, packed. There's, there's no, it's not an action packed um, no, comic. There's they have, no splash pa- panels. There's no breaking of the panel really. There is occasional, you know. Um, um, little breaks into the panel where something hangs off the, you know, from out of the picture. Mm. You got the dog right. Yeah, well, he's you he know, looks good. Um, he, it's every boy's dream to have a dog like Snowy. Yeah, very he's, smart. I was and compact, with Snowy. you know, it's like a I, I don't know what they're West Highland Terriers or something, whatever they are. They're very um, Terriers are, are known to be um, ad, very agile, friendly, and, and clever. And, and they don't you. give up. They don't give up. No dogs give up. Oh, a lot of dogs. <laughs> Ter- you know. I think you're thinking about cats. Ooh. Cats always give up. Now you're giving your um, secrets away, aren't you? Yeah. You obviously no, don't I've, like cats, do I've you? I've grown up with cats too. I love cats. Oh, you do? Oh. Yeah. Cats are awesome, but they're different. They're not dogs, you know? Slightly. Slightly. Different, so, yeah. slightly different. Yeah. Although, you know, having said that, it, it still strikes me as funny when I see a cat on a leash going for a walk. Um, I think that's very funny. It's cruelty. Is it? Yeah, because cats are, uh, are a symbol of freedom. They just walk anywhere, but a dog... A dog can't go on, walk on top of a fence and walk next door and walk up buildings and all that sort of stuff. A dog uh-huh. can't do that. Mm. Although they can jump um, eight-foot-high fences. I've seen dogs do that. So what I've got here presented something inside a simple shape here. I'm trying to sort of now work out some of these intricate details that, that uh, tell us about uh, Hergé, you know. This, I'm um, looking at contrast, light and dark, and um, trying to create uh, a, a relevance there. In the photograph, there isn't an awful lot of... Um, 
uh, detail. So I'm inferring, I'm sort of building it up as I go along. There's things that are that uh, should be there that are probably missing, little creases and things. Well, he, he's I'm pretty very big interpretive. In, he's pretty big in Belgium. It's all it's all lace in Belgium and and and, and uh, Tintin, isn't it? And chocolate. Don't forget the oh, chocolate. The chocolate. The chocolate. Yeah. So, yeah. any other tropes that we want to sort of cultural tropes well, they, that they, we need they to call the Belgian think about? The poor man of Europe, don't they? Oh my gosh. Uh, well, that, that's what the French call them anyway. Right. Okay. The French are disgusted because they speak their language. You know, the Belgians pinch it off, and, yep. and they're stuck between. Um, is it Holland? Yeah, Holland and um, mm. and um, France. Yeah. Well, um, you know, uh, what, my what? experience growing up is uh, I couldn't read any uh, Tintin books because there was guess what was the most popular book in the library? Tintin. Tintin. Right. Well, so could... whenever there was a book come out, you, you couldn't get it. And by the time, you know, um, by the time you could get it from the, from the library, like you, you ordered it and then everyone had gone through it and, and, uh, and read it, Somebody either broke it or stole it. Or drew over it. No one drew over it. We oh. didn't have... Um, I always found um, drawn bits. I never had that problem. Um, except whenever I, I lent books to people. If I lent books to people, they would always come back with... Well, people hang on to their Tintin because there's not many of them in second-hand bookshops or op shops, that's for sure. Ah, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Recently, they brought them out in a smaller... Size, compact size. Yeah. And I thought it was a ridiculous, stupid thing to do because... The frames are very small. That's right. And he, he's gone to all that effort to do all that mm. detail. And you have these these um, Reader's Digest pocket. size. Yeah, it's just I just small. thought it was stupid. I don't know That's kind of like it. what they did with Mad. Pocket Mad was annoying because you couldn't appreciate yeah, you see, the details. Um, we got Pocket Mad before we got Mad in mm. Australia. So that's all you could get. Mm. Don't get mad, get pocket mad. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, the so story, tell me the why you story, like I, him. Tell me why you like him. Well, I like him for the reason that you you liked him, or didn't like him. I love uh, the idea of a, a of a kid like me solving pro- problems, solving puzzles. You so, know? So, so did you, um, you know, froth at the mouth looking at the artwork, or what? yeah, yeah. They have uh, okay. That's actually a good point. We should talk about that. The style of artwork. Uh, There's nothing like we were experiencing. Not not American comics or English comics. Yeah. English comics had full paintings, had watercolors, and things like that, which well, you know English because of their are a lot printing closer to process. Tintin than anything else, that's for sure. No. They were. No. No. Look, look and learn. Yeah, but look and learn. Tiger and Empire. No, absolutely yeah, but, not. Yeah, but look how was that? Hang on. Look and learn. It wasn't a comic as such. It had a lot of different illustrators in it. Yeah. It, 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 it's a magazine. It was a magazine. Yeah, but, but that's what I'm saying. That... Comics in England were magazines. That's the, my, my very point. Yeah, but hang on. Look and Learn is very different to most of the comics that were coming out. Eagle like... Comics? Yeah, well, that was a little bit different too. That was like... The, that, that was but I'm not talking early. about American comics. I'm talking now about English comics. Yeah, but I'm just talking... You know, so am not, I. I'm not talking with... About... I'm saying that English comics are, are closer to French comics than any anything we ever saw. Maybe they're humour comics like um, Wiz, but um, you know, it's like French versions. Yeah, of but that the, sort well, of you see, um, most of the comics we got in Australia when I was a kid were English comics. Mm. It was hard to get the the. I mean, we had the the ones no, you published had here. Batman, Superman, Flash. Yeah, but they were always Lantern. reprints. No, they were all the original American ones, the colour yeah, ones, full colour. Yeah, no, we, no, they all came later. No. You, you and me are in two different worlds, mate. I don't understand that. Well, okay, I'm so, 10 years older than Well, roughly. Eagle Comics you could get at the newsagents. Yep. Right. And then TV Century 21. Now you're telling me you can't remember TV Century 21. So all the Jerry yeah, Anderson that came films, later. That Sting stuff Ray came and later. That came Fireball later. XL5. Well, that was. I, I think the my first. I think the first. Um, Dan Dare comic is mid fifties, isn't it? I think it's mid fifties. 
-hmm. And you certainly weren't born in the mid-50s. No. But, you know, I, I appreciated all of that stuff. Look, the, those are magazines in any case. The American comics were different. They were yeah. printed yeah. on newsprint style, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, paper. And they had a, a simpler printing process. You had little holes in the page where the, the grips would, uh, like a newspaper, yeah. you know, they'd move it down the production line. So it was a process, a different process. Uh, French have... comics had magazines. They were magazine style like they had in England. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's how I uh, responded to it. Now, my first close view of Tintin were in reprints that were in two colours in uh, uh, Reader's Digest uh, children's magazine. So What was it called? Yeah. I've never heard of them. What was it called? Uh, my sister would know. I can't Reader's even... Digest? Yeah, it was a Reader's Digest uh, kids' library, kids' magazine. Okay. Did it have the whole story or was it broken yeah, up into in, in, in installments? Yeah, in episodes, installments. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but they were, black and, they were not black and white. They were, they were duotones. Two so colour. Two colour. Mm. So well, it sounds like they, they come from Australia then. They were probably reprinted in Australia for... Um, you know what? I never asked. I worked for... Um, I worked for uh, uh, Reader's Digest in, in Sydney, in Australia. I never asked a question. I should have asked. Did you print the children's... No, but, but, but I mean, it's, um, like the, it's like... Reader's it's, Digest here? It's like, um, you know... The Can first, I get the, a copy? The second page of most comics, you'd look down the bottom and it'd tell you that, you know... It's, it's, it's a I was a kid. I it's never a, looked at... It's who, a, well, I do. I, was a I never... A, a I, the only thing I looked at was the, the address of... Um, Oh. Marvel Comics, and that, even that was because I had a friend going over to New York on, on Pan Am, and uh, they... Oh, of course you go on Pan Am, of course, you know. Well, the only way to fly. Mm. And they, um, they had... Um, he asked me, if, what did you want from New York? And I was a kid. I want an Avengers T-shirt. Oh, you've already told that story. Yeah, so Stanley came down and gave mm. him a T-shirt, and he had his signature on it and everything. And... Uh, Stand I the think man. he even signed a true believer as well. So, yeah. you know, that was cool. Well, Stan's like, um, Stan's like Stalin. Oh, my God. You know, if, if you get oh. a kid young enough, oh. you got him for life. <laughs> That's Hitler. Oh, no, 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 no. Stalin was before Hitler. Actually, it's before even Stalin, it was the, um, the Jesuits. The Jesuit said that. You give me the boy and we'll give you the man. <clears throat> That's what the Jesuit said. Right. So, yeah. Okay. It's getting worse. There's a bit of dichotomy there with, with his carefully combed hair with that bit sticking up. Mm, I know. Dichotomy. It looks funny when it, it's... You know, when when you see the blonde bit sticking up like that, it's, it's acceptable. But as soon as you darken it, it starts getting into... Um, the realm of the undead. Of, no, the realm of um, uh, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. You just saw you you ruined my whole day. <laughs> that's it. Um, that's it. Dragon Ball Z. Here we go. I've drawn so many Dragon Ball Z uh, Goku's and things over. You there. have. Yeah, for people that like Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. I don't like it. I you, don't like you did Dragon Ball Z. Fabulous drawing of my son as one of the characters. Yeah, but I don't like Dragon Ball Z because the characters look to me like they're well, they're all constipated. constipated. That's, that's exactly my words. Right, you know, they're all angry, constipated um, yep. that's, people. That's the word, constip you know, constipation comics. Now you've ruined my day. It's like um, those pictures should be hung up in toilets. <laughs> how, how would pictures of constipated expressions help people in toilets? Um. Just hang up a mirror so that they can see their own. Hang up a mirror. In a toilet. A mirror in I'm going to do a film. I think I'm you're I'm going to do a film of constipated. Um, I'm going to draw Goku, and I'm going to I'm going to have all him of sitting these. on the toilet screaming. Well, no, you don't need to do that because you're just inferring it by yeah. just drawing his face because yeah. his face looks like he's got some problems. It's constipation. They all all those characters end up with hemorrhoids, you know. Yeah, I've got all some actual words for it, like um, 
You've got a word for hemorrhoids? No, I've wrote it, written down here. Here we go. Some Dragon Ball facial expressions, and these are ex these are ways to explain Dragon Ball facial expressions. You keep drawing, and I'll read them out. Uh, you keep drawing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, does that mean it's good? I don't know why. Um, well, I didn't expect to do this today, but Dragon Ball facial expressions. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number one. Yeah. Constipatia. Constipatia. Yes. Yep. Go Number ahead. two. The bowel constrictor. The bowel constrictor. Yep. Number three. Yep. Expalians. No. Alien? Expelianus. Oh. It's like a Harry Potter. Expelianus. Expelianus. Oh. The Asperger. The Asperger. The hot packet. The hot pocket or the hot, hot pocket? pocket? Hot pocket. We the poopal. We the poopal. Log jam. Log jam. Game face. Game face. There you go. Bum stuck. Bum stuck. <laughs> piano stool. Mm, the piano stool. <laughs> poop poop de poop 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 de doop gaseous assius gaseous I assius. like that one yeah sad sack sad sack oh cut it out yeah. it's sad sack sad sacks read sad sack you don't know about sad sack do you yeah duke duk 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 captain's log oh god these are yeah. captain's log hurty turty yeah <laughs> hurty <laughs> Hurty turdy and block party. <laughs> That's it. Block, oh my God. block party. The block party. Yeah. You heard it here first. So um, yeah, the uh, it's it, Dragon Ball Z. Someone was um, talking about Dragon Ball Z in class yesterday, and uh, I, um, as I was listening to this, um, this uh, love fest for something that I don't love. Um, I started to think about all the expressions that uh, that um, Goku and the others would make. Well, you need to read that back to your class, yeah. especially to the ones who like it. Mm. Now, well, um, they, what's they your favourite Tintin story? Um, well, the only one that I've actually read all the way through is Lake, <laughs> Lake of Sharks. Um, I'm, gl I'm glad you're an expert. <laughs> no, I am an expert. I love the characters, but mm. I'm not. I don't read. I read the pictures. Yes, so do I. I don't um, read the reading. But I liked I liked I don't the read the writing, I read the reading. Yeah, that's a quote. Mm. That's a famous quote from Popeye. I read reading, I don't read writing. Um, I like the one <laughs> set in Tibet where yeah. he chases the, the, the Yeti. Yep. I like that one. Yep. Um, I, I, I think he did it because he couldn't be bothered colouring because there's lots of the snow. Moon, the moon one, there's two moons. Well, that's the famous one, isn't yeah. it? The moon one. Yeah, I love Was that. Is it Destination Moon or something? What's it called? No. Um, it's got the, the, the rocket ship sitting there on the moon anyway, on yeah, the cover. Yeah, But the one in the Yeti, there was a lot of white pages, and I'm thinking, oh, he must have been bored. He didn't want to colour them in. <laughs> you know, lots of snow. Mm. And yeah. the other thing I remember about his cartoons is that they were very violent. Uh, yeah, they had punch-ups and things. Well, when they People were punched up out. and bashed on the head and all that sort of stuff, yeah. it seemed to be really violent for some reason. Whereas, I mean, you've got these terrible... American um, stuff from the 40s and 50s of they eyes, get knocked out eyes of coming frame. out and all that sort of... Oh, the, the EC comics. Yeah, and which were so-called shocking, but I, I felt there was a... A disconnect. There was between a physical wasn't... bang with those comics. I don't know, like a clinical... Yeah, well, like I Batman punch-ups in the TV series, you know, they'd be hidden by a onomatopoeic bang, whereas a Hergé uh, comics... In Tintin, they, you could actually see the connection. Yeah, when someone it's got bashed on the head, you know, he, he woke up like, like an hour later and stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? He didn't wake up straight away. No. So it was, yeah, I guess it was more uh, gritty and realistic like that. But you've yeah. got to remember that the, the, the diamond the, smugglers and stuff like that. Yeah, but the, the, only, that's like, the that, people that could kill you, they're well, running after you with guns, well, baby. Th that's a connection. I remember but feeling... This kid. Um, have you read um, Little Annie? Um, Fanny. Mm. <laughs> Annie Oakley. <laughs> Annie, get your oh, 
Orphanani. 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 No, I haven't. Well, the, the, they were very gritty, yeah. like like early. Um, no, yeah, because they were like came early Dick Tracy. But did they yes? Were, they well, were, they came in the same era. Of I the, had the uh, same feeling reading the Depression Dick Tracy era with the, and Little Orphan Annie mm. that I had looking uh, reading um, Tintin. Uh, Tintin because the violence was similar. It was actually, I felt it. Yeah, it's not just a bunch of stars with birds flying around. You know well, what they, I mean? They had that. They had symbols like that too. Yeah, but it was different. They, they had a, a much more subdued, clinical way of doing it. Yeah, when Snowy was drunk, he had um, symbols yeah. flying around, little birds, whatever stars, um, and and zoings. You know those? I'll tell you what a zoing is. Yeah, show us what a zoing is. We can't wait. That is that a zoing? Yeah. I call it zoings. Really? Check your keyboard. See if there's a zoing. Hmm. Um, symbols of, uh, you know, comics are part of the visual language. Yeah, like the... And they enjoyed it. They had that yeah. uh, ability to use those symbols. So a lot of those symbols are international. I know. When people swear it's in wonderful. comics... Yeah, they use the, the uh, hashtags and the... Yeah. The the um, apps and the yeah and broken the things, things that, and that daggers never and had daggers and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, looking, I've used that before. These are little terms, visuals, visual cues of uh, puns. Hmm. So you make visual puns, which are literal translations or literal versions of figures of speech. So when someone stares daggers, there's actual daggers. You know, um, coming from their eyes. I've actually used that before in illustrations. There, there's a shop. I quite like the play of yeah. visual um, puns. There's a shop in um, in Melbourne that sells um, Tintin Tintin um, stuff, mm. like original prints and all that sort of stuff. You know, um, high quality prints and things, and wow. and sculptures and stuff like that. And this, but they, the, but you'd never get that stuff in a, like a comic shop that sells similar stuff. Because it's different. It, you know, it's almost like he's above all that. It's a, it's a high class stuff, you know. Yeah, but uh, well, you I don't think buy you had Tintin in a well, comic shop. Well, you wouldn't shop have in any you case. wouldn't have Tintin on the back of a, a cornflakes packet, you know. You wouldn't have um, not here. You wouldn't have no. Maybe maybe in France. I don't know. I can't comment. And you wouldn't have Tintin little um, uh, Lego men and all that sort of stuff. Although I don't know, they might by now because. Lego's gone nuts, haven't they? They've taken over, you know. You can get Lord of the Rings Legos, you know. Can you? I didn't know that. I well, if you can't, I mean, I don't know. If you can't, if they hear that message, they'll probably start building them, you know. Hmm. Me, I'm a Meccano man. Okay. I collect cartoons of people standing on Legos and how they react. There's, um, there's a very funny gag about... Um, um, you can't stop Godzilla in New York. He just in New so York. What, yeah, they just can't stop him. So what they did, they made a huge, great Lego and left it on the ground, and he stepped on it. And, oh! <laughs> <laughs> and it, oh, that's a cartoon. Yeah, it's a cartoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's clever. That's referring to the adults, the parents' experience yes. of you know shag carpets and Lego, yeah. sort of stuck there waiting in stealth mode. For mum or dad, actually, mum always wears shoes, but it's always dad's dad. always poor old dad in his socks. It's always four o'clock in the morning. I, well, my dad never got up at four o'clock, except really? to go well at five o'clock maybe to go to work, but uh, he wasn't a milkman, so I don't know what this. Now milkman go to work about uh, eleven o'clock at night too. Don't well, I don't know what the four o'clock is. Maybe so, he so just told you. I'm your going background to work. has to be white, a maybe, bl yeah. black. Surely the background has to be black. Why? Why is that? Oh, to make snow look better. <laughs> yeah, but I want to make snow in the snow, maybe. No, 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 no. I think Snow is the best character there. I like the way you've done his hair too. It's good. You haven't completely blocked him in. Mm. Yeah. So you know the characters. Uh, I really responded to the Thompson twins. Um, they're so fantastic. That's dumb as dumb. I know. That's why I like them. Oh. You, you're talking to the converted here. I no, love this stuff. Like, you know, Adored Laurel Tintin. and Hardy. These people... Give him a blue shirt. You, you can't have the same Tintin people Tintin. bumping into each other with this. I don't know, it just... It didn't work. Yeah. When, when you have a duo, there has to be some sort of... 
dichotomy, mm. some sort of balance, some to rub off each other. The fact that they're both the same to me was dumb. It was mm. a dumb idea. Right. They don't have anything else where twins are in, in movies or books or stuff that are the same. Because <laughs> the twins are always slightly different. They sort of, you know... Anyway, not these guys. Well, yeah. All these jokes about they can't tell the difference between which one and which all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but even they couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, but... That, well, that's a, that's a, a gross misunderstanding well, of, of twins... Of course, you know, twins there's a lot of French culture that we don't get here because they can't... <laughs> no, it's true. We, we haven't seen this. So the Thompson twins could actually be referring to something like a vaudeville routine from the 1920s or something like that. So when did uh, Tintin start? In the 40s? It started before the war, I think. Before the war. Yeah. And the war started in 39. I, I think... Well, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't know. You're the expert. You've read one book. Yeah. I've read all of them. I don't really, you know. I, I, I was glad I read them all. And I think that's the way to do it because you get into the... You really saturate yourself into the world of Tintin, you know, by mm. reading all the books in one go. But... Um, you didn't like the story. No, I'm just saying it didn't have much of an afterglow because all I could really uh. remember after it was that car, underneath the car. <laughs> And right. it's not like I can still remember Carl Bark stuff or Kirby's. Okay, well, the, the style. I remember Thor, you okay, know, the style messing very, around with his Let's talk about the style then. The yeah. style of the artwork is called lean clair. Lean clair means that you can actually appreciate the line work. Yes. It's not in, the colour's not interfering with the line work yes. or trying to hide the line work like in American comics. Yeah, but that's American the comics, process. So yeah. Terrible. But it's also the mentality because today Depends on blotting paper. Yeah, but today if you look at American comics, they're they're trying to be European. all things. No, they're trying to be more color. Oh you yeah, you know, colorful yeah. Yeah. Uh, magazine style, showing off the printing process. You know, aren't we clever? We've got twelve colors, so you know. And that's, they're all dark. Well, that's part of the cinema ex um, influence. You yeah, know, like, like Alien and yeah. stuff. Coming back into comics. See, I mean, that's one of the things I don't like about things. modern comics is too much detail in each panel. It stops the flow of the story. You're, yeah, but you're coming at it from... Uh, yeah, look, you're coming at like it from a different Bernie direction. Rochston, even Bernie Wrightson, he's got all this detail of, of Swamp Thing and all mm. this sort of stuff. And it gets in the way. No, no, but you, you would have backgrounds where he wouldn't fill up the whole picture like these uh, guys from the Filipino school. They'd fill up every square every millimetre of the page mm. with, with a detail or something, you know? Yeah. But um, it's, uh, you know, it's like storyboards. Storyboards work because you see the flow of the story. There's a visual line going mm. all the way through them. Mm. And th I'm not uh, saying he didn't do that because he did it. Yeah. He did it, but uh, there's just too many things you stop the flow to look at the detail. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, that's... I mean, um, they're, they're printing the complete works of Proust um, in comic form. Who's he when he's at home? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they're also Marcel doing... Marcel Proust? They're also doing... Yeah, that's the guy, Marcel Proust. Yeah. yeah. Who's he when he's at home again? <laughs> he's a French well, it, philosopher and a no, writer. No, he's a great novelist. Novelist, there you go. And they're huge. Like they're, 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 I don't know, they take you... Many, 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 many weeks to read the books. You know, there's so right. many in the, in the one story. But, I mean, they're even doing the complete um, James Joyce's Ulysses in comic form. Mm. But only in Europe would they do these things, you know. Mm. And they're, they're, they're um, I don't know. Boring? They're, they're, there's, no, there's a literary and artistic style. Mm. Uh, it, like the Americans sort of invent... I mean, there's all sorts of people who say the French and all sorts of people invented comics... But the people who do comics the best are the Americans because mm. they're, they're just... I mean, and everybody says that, whether you're Italian, French or whatever, you know? Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, certainly as it's, an it's, art It's got something to do with the do. economy of meaning. The economy of meaning, like the American language. It's full of, you know, like, OK well, and all that sort of stuff. the word graphic novel comes from Eisner. Uh, sequential art actually comes from Eisner. Yeah. Graphic novel doesn't come from him. 
But the um, concept of so, uh, so what's the arts. French word for uh, comic? It's um, bande de zine, isn't it? Mm. Which bande is design. which is what does that mean? Um, it means design, but what? It means. Hang on, look. I've I'll go got and a lovely I'll, bunch of coconuts. I'll go and find our local French experts. So, okay. Getting close to the end of the illustration. I enjoyed this. This is fun. Um, you know, it brings back a lot of memories um, looking at the comics. Um, oh, the, the true reason why um, I didn't read a lot of comics was guess why? They were in French. So I couldn't read French, unfortunately. Um, but I did love the pictures, and uh, that was the thing that really um, struck it for me. That was the, the most important thing. So even though I couldn't read the French, I could get the story and really appreciate the actions and the beautiful expressions that he would get into these simple shapes Pourquoi? of snowy and... Why and couldn't you read it? It's French. So, um... They had... Hang on. You're trying to tell me they had French... In the libraries, In yes. the libraries. They didn't have English versions. Nope. The English versions were always out. They were always uh, out. Those so bloody I only English. had... Mm. Bloody English. Yeah. <laughs> English reading kids. All right, so um, this is Hergé, the creator. You're going to put a few little white bits in the hand? Sort of no, I'm going to leave that where it is because it's like the underside. Okay, of oh, the toe. underside. The underside. Yeah. It's a little bit like the Sydney Opera House stuck up there, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, this is Hergé and Snowy, and um, this is. Um, this is Jim Bridges. And this is Franz Cantor, and I'll catch you... On... On the dark side. On the flip side. On the flip side. <laughs> catch you later. Bye-bye. See you, Snowy. Bye. <laughs>